Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time to have a look at a new game called Grey Hack in early access on Steam. It is played entirely in a virtual computer environment and of course it is about hacking. This game is not extremely feature rich just yet and by far not complete. However, there are multiple updates every week and they seem to be making tons of progress. But without any further ado, let's actually dive into the single player and I'm gonna show you what this game is about. I've already started a world, so we are going to delete this before starting a new one. There we go. We are starting up our computer. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Install OS. Let's freaking do this. Username is Nathan. The computer is gonna be Nathan PC and I'm gonna have a password and I'm gonna confirm that. Great, next, install OS, holy cow, that was fast. Now, when you first start this game, you actually start with a different text file than this. So in this text file, I already have a Wi-Fi access connection password. However, I'm gonna show you exactly what you have to do in order to hack into one of the other networks. So this is the interface. We have a file explorer. We can also drag and drop every window. And of course we can have multiple windows open. The terminal where we're gonna do most of our hacking. We also have a map where we can visually see some of the IPs. At the moment we have no access to network because we're offline. Also mail, we do not have a mail address just yet. There is a in-game browser. We also have a notepad, uh, which we're going to make use of. We have a manual with everything you need to know. There's actually not everything in it, but it does get you started. Good, let's check out our Wi-Fi network. So at the moment, the best access, the one that is closest, is probably one of those. MyNet or Chip Mundler. Let's actually see which Wi-Fi do we have. There we go, MyNet744 would have the password freedom. However, we're gonna figure out our own password. So let's actually open up the manual and we're gonna open up network commands. We're also gonna open up our terminal right there and what we have to do is go through the first four commands here. Ermon is going to enable the monitor mode on wireless interfaces. So let's do that first of all. Ermon start ETH0 right there. And we can see monitor mode is now set to true. The next thing we can do is IW list. This is going to show a list of the Wi-Fi networks visible from my computer. So let's do that. IW list ETH0. And we can see this is the same list we have right here, but this time we also get the BSSID, which is important for the next step. So maybe let's uh, grab our notepad right here. We can make this a little bit smaller and now actually let's copy this over here. And then we're gonna set up the new network. We are gonna choose chip mundler right here. So this is our BSSID. I can paste that in right here. We also have the name and it has to be the exact name with the exact spelling. So right there. And now we are going to figure out the password soon, hopefully. In order to do that, we have to move to the next command, the airplay. So let's see how that is actually used. We have to use airplay minus B, then the BSSID number minus E, and then the name of the network. Airplay minus B, then we want to copy over this ID and we want minus E and copy over the name. Right there, this is the entire command, let's actually use that. This is going to read a couple of packets and it's going to produce ACKs. And I believe we need that in order to get the password with the air crack command afterwards. And for that we need around 7,000 or so packets. Now I'm not sure what we need, 7,000 packets or 7,000 ACKs. So I'm just gonna wait until we have enough ACKs here. There we go, we have around 7,000. I'm gonna hit Control C in order to abort this process. And if we have a look into our file explorer, this file right here has been created. So now all we have to do is air crack this file. So that's what I'm gonna do, air crack file.cap. The key has been found, it is open up. And now we can copy this over and we have the key we can save this and connect to the internet. 
Let's actually do that. Open up. Um, we want chip mandler. There we go. Password is open up. We want to connect and there we go. We have internet connection. Now that we have internet, it's time to acquire a couple of tools we're going to need. The first thing we need is an email actually. So maybe let's open up the browser and we're going to search for mail. You can choose whatever you want. It leads to the same thing. It's just the name that changes. So maybe let's go with Elercurit. Yeah, why the heck not? Email services, we're going to create a login, Nathan, and a password, create account, and that's all we wanted from this site. We also need a bank account in this game, so let's actually search for bank and uh, let's do OWERS. Why the heck not? Register, we already have our email right there. And we can choose a password, which I'm going to do, create account. And if we actually log into this, we already start with 125 bucks. Let's maybe also add this as a favorite. Next up, I want to search for a shop or a store. We can do that. The store is also always the same. So we are going to add that to our favorites. In this store, the first tool you will find are actually free, except the basic server. So let's actually download the nmap command. This is going to be a very, very important one. And what I want to do is I want to install that in the bin folder. So from your home, go up twice and then into your bin. And right here, whatever you have here can be called upon no matter in which folder you currently are. I'm also going to download SMTP user list. This is another command we get for free. I'm going to add that to the bin folder as well. SSH server, HTTP server and FTP server, I've never used them before. They also have version numbers, so I'm not exactly sure what they are being used for at the moment. Therefore, I'm going to wait to download them. All right, last but not least, we need to have a look at our email. And once you start the game the first time, you actually have a little different email. But uh, we got this email right here, just as if we did the first mission once you start the game. So there's one mission I cannot show you, but it's essentially the same thing we're going to be doing later on. There's a mysterious email telling me to go to this website. So we're going to copy this over and actually go there. And ta-da, it is a hack shop. It is another shop with a bunch of different tools and actually a bunch of jobs. Let's also add that to our favorites. We're going to require that. But let's download the decipher the tool. We're going to need that pretty much from the get-go and I'm also going to install it in the bin folder. Everything else I believe at the moment is kind of optional. Well, we're going to need some specific ones once we know which jobs we have. So without any further ado, maybe let's uh, actually do a job. Why the heck not? We have corrupt data. We also have credentials needed. We have, uh, let me see. Ah, these are the only two jobs at the moment. There's also a police data, which you have to delete or academic records that need to be changed. So there's a lot of potential, but these are like the only four missions that I've seen so far. So maybe let's go with credentials needed first. Maximum discretion is required, so credentials must be obtained without attracting the attention of the victim. So maybe phishing, which is something this game allows you to do, isn't the best strategy for this. Let's uh, accept this credentials needed mission. Right here in the mail, we actually get more information. So maybe if we open up our notepad for this, we can add a couple of information. For instance, we have the IP. We can add that right here. We also have the LAN. So there might be multiple users and we have to make sure that we target the victim's IP LAN. Also, we have a name right here. And these are all of the things that we know about the server. So maybe let's open up the map right here and type in this IP in order to search for it. This is basically the same thing as typing nmap into the terminal. But right here, I can search for it. And then I can uh, click on that in order to execute the nmap command. So you can see, you could also type this yourself into the terminal and the same thing would happen. What we can see from this scan though is that we have port 21 and 22 open, port 21 being the FTP and port 22 the SSH. Both have version 1.0. So these are the two ports I might be able to get into the server. 
Let's open up our browser one more time and check for a tool. In the shop right here, we can see what types of services are affected. For instance, SSH right here. We could inject a new root password and uh, force ourselves into the SSH server, for instance. We could also do an FTP nuke, which uh, basically does the same thing, but for the FTP. We could also log in as a guest on the SSH server. I think I'm gonna try that. That sounds very easy. We could download version 1.1 so far for 30 bucks. So let's maybe do that and add that to our bin folder. SSH guest. Hold the phone. SSH guest. There we go. We need to add the IP address and the port is optional. So there's not a lot you need to do here. There we go, plus IP address, and we are actually connected to the computer, the target computer. We can also see this is represented here on the map, and we can see which IP we are connected to. So if we look at that, for instance, we can see this is not uh, the correct IP, potentially. Let me actually go ahead and open up their browser. I think I should be able to do that. So this is their browser. And if we copy this, I should be able to insert that right here. And let me see. I want one, I believe, right there. And we can actually see the ports. So port 21 is what we actually want. You can see this is the LAN number. We don't really want to be on port 22, which we are at the moment. So that could be a problem. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up the file explorer here. We're gonna try to get into this uh, using the FTP account instead. Here in the etc, we have a password, but I don't think it's the password we need because we are on the wrong LAN machine. Yeah, let's go into the var folder, system log, and I want to delete these entries right here. And then we are going to disconnect from this. Let's see, exit, there we go. What I want instead is hack into the FTP server. So let's try to do that. We're gonna need the tool for that. Shop FTP nuke. I think this is just the nuke we need. We could go for version 1.6 already. It's a little bit more expensive, but maybe that is advantageous. Now let's see. We have to use FTP nuke plus the IP address and then just set a new password or new port, but the port is optional. The password is set right here. Oh man, let's freaking do that. FTP nuke, the IP address. Then uh, minus root pw equals new password 1234. Can connect. Port 21 not found. Well, uh, oh, oh, okay. This is the wrong IP here. Let me copy this IP over. Root password 1234. There we go. Resetting root password to 1234. So that's done. That means we should be able to connect using the FTP command. All we have to do is type FTP, then username, add password, and then the IP address. So FTP, username is root, right? And then the password is at 1234, and then the IP. There we go. We are connected. And this time we are at the right port. However, FTP doesn't allow me to open up the file explorer. There we go. We cannot do it. That means we kind of have to navigate through the stuff. Let me see. We want to go into the next folder up here. There we go. We want to go into the etc folder or etc. It's probably not etc. Uh, cd etc. There we go. And then what do we have here? We have the password. So we want to get the password. Is that how that works? Uh, do I have it now? I'm not sure. Ah, there we go. We have it downloaded. This is perfect. Now let's get out of this folder and we want to go into the var folder in order to delete the system logs, right? So cd var and let's see, system log. Can I just remove that? Is it? Let's see, rm. Yeah, rm file. So remove system.log. Not sure if that is possible or... Does it just create a new one? Oh well, that's fine enough. Let's uh, exit this. There we go. We are not connected anymore. And now it's time to decipher the password. So I'm gonna open up my own terminal. And since we are in the home Nathan or the username folder, we can just type decipher password 
Come on, right there, passwords, and the deciphering process starts right away. As you can see, it takes a, a minute or so. Actually, I totally forgot. Before we do this, I should have looked into here, and what we needed was the password for Fern B right here. So actually, what we should do is delete everything else and just keep Fern B in the chant, you know. But I'm gonna wait. So we we figure out how this process works, and then I'm, we'll have to do that. There we go. Password found one two three four. You see, you can see it. we reset the root password, and it is actually one two three four now. But let's delete everything else we don't need. We only want to figure out Fern B. So let's save that and we are gonna decipher one more time. We're almost done and the password is Skyline right there. This should be the answer right there to the email we got. And all we have to do is add the answer Skyline and send the email. You can see the customer is satisfied with the job. And we actually got a little bit of money. Let's see, we did spend a little bit of money, so we didn't start with 125. Let me see, the bank was this one, login. We have $240 right now, pretty good. Oh, what is happening? No, 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 wait, wait. <laughs> I, I wanted to end the episode on this note anyways, but I wasn't careful enough while explaining stuff. And you have been discovered performing an unauthorized intrusion into their system. This type of notice is clearly against our rules. Uh, just be more cautious in the future. So basically I lost the game at this point. But the next time when we continue a little bit and go in more in-depth missions and other tactics in order to hack, I will be able to also show you how to avoid getting caught. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's wrap up this first episode. Thank you so much for watching, have a great time, and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye bye.